what's up guys Minetto Cyrus here no skippy here unfortunately but I'm playing a game of domination on Kowloon and as you can see I'm using the dual HS tens now let me endorse this thing for a second actually before I do this spot right here that's a great nade spot on Kowloon if you're playing domination throw a nade right up there just make sure you don't fall off the edge and you can get a good uh, you can get a good couple of kills on B all right now let me endorse this HS-10 for a second, because I never, absolutely never, see this gun online. I see the Olympia being used more than this gun. I see the Kippers being used more than this gun. I'm going to go ahead and take a guess that everyone, or at least most people, think this thing's a piece of shit. I mean, I used to think this thing was a piece of shit back when the game first came out. First time I ran into this gun, it was on Nuketown, on the ground and I had no ammo left. I picked this thing up, used it for a second, and switched it back out for my weapon with no ammo. But you know, it's getting around that time when you start getting bored of the weapons that you normally use, and you start trying to rack your brain for weapons that you haven't used before, and the HS-10 ended up being on the list. So I tried it out, it's starting to like it. It's not an amazing weapon by any means, you know? It's, it's no FAMAS, it's no 74U, but it is pretty good, and it's different. And when you end up getting bored with the weapons, that's kind of enough. If you haven't tried out the HS-10, and you're bored with the normal weapons, the FAMAS, the 74U, all those assault rifles, all those SMGs, I suggest you try out the HS-10, or any of the other shotguns, any weapon class you haven't used before, because it helps with the boredom. And if you have tried it out, and you didn't like it, or you thought it sucked, Fucking try it again, alright? Challenge yourself. It's a good weapon. Alright, I think that's enough of that. So, I'm playing on Kowloon here. And bear with me, because I'm going to do a little bitching for a second. And I complain about this one quite a bit. But that's how you know I care. So, I'm not exactly into this whole map pack feature thing. You know what I'm talking about. Those zip lines on Kowloon, the bridges on Discovery, that sentry gun thing on Berlin Wall. You know, all that shit that was supposed to be the big selling point for that particular map pack. You'd watch the developers in those little videos on the Xbox dashboard, and they'd be talking excitedly about all these new features in their new map. And they've got zip lines that can take you across the map, and bridges that blow up, and... They'd be so psyched about it, and then you'd get psyched about it, you'd end up buying the map, and then now everybody's disappointed by it because none of that shit gets used. And the big problem with all these additions is they're too optional, you know? Those zip lines need to be able to take you to a place that you can't get to otherwise. The bridges that blow up on Discovery, they should be able to cut the map in half so the two teams are divided for a short period of time. Th those things should be a lot more prominent in the map. You know, it almost feels like you got scammed the way this stuff gets overlooked. I just hope in the future that if they choose to pursue this whole map feature thing that they make the features a lot more prominent so they almost need to be used. At the end of the day though, you know, besides all that shit, Kowloon is a good map. It's got all these nice back alleys and little corridors. It really has that cityscape feel to it. It actually reminds me of like a darker favela from Modern Warfare 2. Especially in the sense that it's one of those maps that's kind of fun to navigate. Especially with a close range weapon. In Modern Warfare 2, it was the tactical knife. In this game, using the HS-10s. So I'm playing Domination. And you might have noticed... I'm using a new set of killstreaks, completely devoid of any Blackbird whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I'm completely over Blackbird. I've decided to give up on Blackbird for the rest of Black Ops. And the reasoning goes back to this whole HS-10 weapon change-up thing. I'm just starting to get bored of using the Blackbird. It's like you go through a relatively normal match, and for about 8 kills everything's going fine. You get eight kills, you get your blackbird, you toss it up, and by that time, it's like, you know how that fucking match is going to end. There's no surprises from that point. 
It's not even a match anymore. It's just a slaughter. I, I just get bored of that. Besides that, there's kind of this feeling you get when you're using the Blackbird. Or at least I get. And it's almost like you're cheating. Like, you got this foresight that they don't have. You pretty much know where they're going to be before they're going to be there. You know where they're facing. You know where they're going to go. You know where they are for a good minute. And that's enough to get you three more kills and another Blackbird for another teammate. These things can go on all match. Eventually, as soon as that thing gets up, the match becomes so predictable. And then there's that whole back out factor. You know, anytime a big kill streak goes up, a lot of teammates, not teammates, a lot of the enemy team starts to back out because they don't want to get shit on for the rest of the match. So that kind of gets boring too. You know, you want to use lower kill streaks so you can give them some kind of hope that they're going to win. And, you know, stats aside, not using the Blackbird kind of helps you gauge where you are in terms of just general skill. And what I mean by that isn't that players who don't use the Blackbird are somehow more skillful. What I'm saying is it helps you determine better where your skill is in the game because for half of the game, you don't have this thing up that pretty much helps you see the future. And I think that that, at the end of the day, does make your game better. So anyway, I've switched out my kill streaks. I feel a lot more team friendly now. Now this time around, I've got Napalm, Mortar, and uh, Rolling Thunder. You know, really team friendly, objective kill streaks that help you clear out the map, clear out certain flag points and capture points, and block the team from getting to certain areas of the map. Really useful. Plus, they can net you a surprisingly large amount of kills. I'd have to say the one that kills the most out of those three is probably the Rolling Thunder. That thing just mows down everything in its path. It's about ten times better than the Stealth Bomber from Modern Warfare 2. But my favorite out of the three would have to be the Napalm Strike. There's a certain amount of satisfaction that comes with cutting somebody off from getting a flag cap when nobody's on it. Plus, you know, there is a surprising amount of people who don't have Flag Jacket Pro to make it through that fire. Actually, I don't even have Flag Jacket Pro, and I've been on this prestige for a while. I don't even know why I don't have Flag Jacket Pro. Actually, you know what? I think I know what it is. And this is probably going to totally contradict everything I said earlier about not using Blackbird and switching to the HS10s to challenge yourself, but... I think the reason, well, here's the thing. Those new challenges that came with getting pro perks, you know, those challenges, contracts, what else? All that shit that they tried to add to the maps, all that stuff was nice. It was this kind of thing where they were adding a new feature and it was really nice to have. But there's a certain level of foresight that a lot of game developers, or maybe just the game developers under Activision, don't really seem to have. Because you see all this new stuff in trailers, and you're like, wow, what a great idea. I see what you're trying to do here. You're making contracts so you can help us level up quicker, so you can help us get to that 15th prestige faster. And, you know, you're... You're making all these challenges for us, for the perks, so that we can get pro perks, to make it feel like we've earned something and bring back that feeling that you got in, you know, Modern Warfare 2 or COD 4, where you had to do a certain number of things to unlock a red dot site or a holographic site, or so on and so forth. You know, you're trying to bring back that feeling of accomplishment that you get, and it's the same feeling of accomplishment that makes you continue to play the game. But by the time everything's said and done, the game's starting to near its end, starting to reach the end of its lifetime and get taken over by the new game, in this case, Modern Warfare 3, I, at the very least, start to get kind of lazy. You know, I start challenging myself by switching out my weapons for the HS-10s, or not using the Blackbird anymore, because I want to play the game. The whole goal is... I want to kill people, and 
that's just what I want to do. But I also, you know, say I want a prestige. I also want to start out with every weapon in the game. I just don't feel like working anymore. I don't want to challenge myself in that way. I just want to play the game and have fun and just kind of do nothing to have to play the game. It's a certain special kind of laziness that I get when the game starts to near its end and I'm pretty much done playing with it. Alright, so anyway, I'm done talking. I hope you guys enjoyed the commentary. See you guys next video. Peace. Take a shot, but I thought that you didn't really